Hey, how's it going? How was your weekend? It is Monday, back on the grind. Okay, so some pretty interesting, if not humorous news today. Something I and others had been saying about Microsoft's low-cost, next-gen entry hardware, Xbox Series S, for the longest time. And now it appears developers are starting to speak out and will be talking about some of the most anticipated games of the decade, and one of them is coming swiftly and silently like a ninja assassin trick-or-treating on Hallow's Eve. Also, Konami has confirmed it's gearing up to reveal its plans for the future of the Silent Hill IP way sooner than you may think. Stand by because we're going to have a bit of fun, a bit of a fun skit later in the video. Just don't take it too seriously, will you? But first, a Gotham Nice developer has seemingly had enough of the 30 FPS cap backlash he's receiving on social media and appears to squarely blame the issues at the Xbox Series S feet, claiming it is holding back games. And the Xbox community reply, and I quote, God of War Ragnarok on PS5 is being held back by the PS4 version by that same logic, end of quote. Um, except God of War Ragnarok was developed with PS4 in mind and only tarted up for PS5, whereas, well, Gotham Knights is a current-gen Xbox Series X and S and PS5-only title, so it's certainly a flawed argument. Yes, Cyberpunk 2077 is 60 FPS on Series S, but it runs at sub-900p in particularly more hardware taxing, stressed areas of the game. And let's not forget... It launched as a 30 FPS game and without ray tracing, something it still doesn't have, and took the best part of a year to even get a 60 FPS patch update. So in theory, Xbox Series S is kind of treated like the One S and the PS4 versions, and some will say even the One X versions of games are graphically superior when compared to the Series S. Now the culprit seems to be the Xbox Series S's deficit in a much slower reduced memory pool. Only 10, yes, only 10 gigabytes compared to the standard 16 gigabyte found in both PS5 and Series X. Now the GPU may be RDNA 2 based, but with, with an overall performance rating of just 3.9 teflops, even the 4.2 teflop PS4 Pro runs visual rings around Xbox Series S. Let's just say there are very few sub 1080p games specifically enhanced for PS4 Pro or Xbox One X and uh, PS4 Pro has less RAM and none of the so-called next-gen features that Series S has. Sourced via an article published via PlayStationLifestyle.com, links can be found in this video's description. So while responding to the Gotham Knights frame rate controversy, a rock steady developer irked Xbox Series S fans by stating that the multi-platform games are hamstrung by its potato GPU. Lee Devonold, a senior character technical artist, took to Twitter to offer his thoughts on the type of bottlenecks and constraints developers face, and said that one such bottleneck is the Xbox Series S GPU. His Twitter thread quickly devolved into a war of words when followers pointed out that a number of games ran at 60 FPS on the Series S. But a lot of these people are not developers, they don't understand development and what it takes to get to 60 FPS. And if you look at Gotham Knights compared to something like Cyberpunk 2077, there's a reason why it's a next gen only game. I mean, the geometry is far more sophisticated. Just, it might not be a better game, but the geometry, the visuals are far more sophisticated than that of Cyberpunk 2077, a game that was in development for seven, eight years. So Gotham Knights is indeed locked at 30 FPS on all consoles because Warner Brothers games want to provide a seamless co-op experience among other things. This resulted in fans criticizing Warner Brothers games with a number of developers jumping into the studio's defense. Devonald said that he wishes, and I quote, gamers understood what 60 FPS means in terms of all the things they lose to make the game run that fast, especially taking into account that with a current gen console that's not much better than a last gen one, end of quote. Ooh, I can see how that would tick off the Xbox community. Now, Devonald went on to say that the Xbox Series S is the 
quote-unquote lowest performer, hamstringing an entire generation of multi-platform games. Bold, bold, and very brave words. But uh, why does the more capable PS5 and Series X have to suffer the 30 FPS cap too? Well, besides the co-op experience being seamless, it also seems that Warner Brothers games just wanted parity between all versions of the game. So because Xbox Series S is a cheap and cheerful potato box, Xbox Series X and PS5 get gimped too. Parity, everyone. Parity. Look, say what you want about Sony's recent missteps, I certainly have. And no company is perfect, but you can't argue with its very sensible decision to ensure there were no hardware capability issues with its current two SKU PS5 hardware offerings. The PS5 Digital Edition and PS5 Standard Disc variant are equal in power. Both are on Zeus level. Very sensible indeed. Now, and I have to say, I'm not really into the all digital gaming thing. I like to get turned up and physical with it. You heard? <laughs> but meanwhile, meanwhile, in the interest of beating Sony on price, and I assume the incentive was also to offer entry-level value gaming into the next generation for its consumers, Microsoft offers two variants of the Xbox Series, hence Series. The Xbox Series X at 12 teflop is significantly more powerful, and it's the one I own, significantly more powerful than its baby brother Xbox Series S at just shy of 4 teflops. You don't need to do the math. But eight T-flops on tap is no small margin. Eight extra T-flops rather, in comparison to the Series S. Is it no wonder then that developers have struggled to get the Series S games running optimally and worthy of its next gen status? Now there are many Series S games that run at sub HD resolutions, many as low as from 540p to 720p, but mostly 900p whenever a 60fps option is offered. Also, many devs have to admit the complete omission of ray tracing from the Series S due to the GPU and memory constrictions. And this is something Digital Foundry has covered, and I got the 540p, 720p, 640p, various different scales of resolution from Digital Foundry with some of the games on Series S that uh, were massively, you know, sacrificing gimped just to get the 60 FPS. So don't argue with me, it's uh, Digital Foundry's own findings. And I'm not gonna tell you the video, go look, go research, don't be lazy. So, indeed, the Xbox Series S is a far cry from the touted 1440p 60fps or 1080p at 120fps that Microsoft has been uh, pitching. It may be able to push older last gen titles or less intricate current gen games or games specifically targeting its lower specs such as you know the Xbox Game Studios first party titles such as Forza Horizon 5 and even with Microsoft's teams at the helm, major cutbacks to geometry and visual fidelity is necessary to get those games running optimally at 60fps. Now as a value driven piece of hardware, no doubt Series S cannot be beaten. It's uber affordable and when paired with Game Pass, nothing, and I mean nothing on the market, comes close to its value proposition. But all this comes at a cost to the advancement the progression of game design and world building and a growing issue for development studios and that naturally fizzles down to the gamer. So will future games from Xbox and its multi-platform partners on Series S hold back Xbox Series X and PS5 development in the multi-platform area due to having to develop the game around a much weaker hardware? Your thoughts in the video comments please. It's certainly a major consideration though for these development studios, isn't it? And as time goes on, so will the flaws in the Series S become more apparent. And I see no point in Microsoft upgrading. I mean, many people have said, well, Microsoft will just offer a Series S upgrade when they offer the Series X upgrade. But I see no point in Microsoft upgrading the Series S hardware to try and tackle this, this generation, especially with a newer model, as the older Series S model will still have to be supported. And that's even more work for the already underpaid and overstretched development community. No, I'm afraid with Series S, Microsoft is stuck with what it's stuck with. And according to at least one developer, Potato Box GPU. And in our final news story for this video, subscribe for more if you're digging the vibe. 
sourced via Eurogamer.net, where the excitement appears to be palpable. It's finally happening, a decade on from the last full Silent Hill game, the survival horror franchise is making a long-awaited comeback. The future of the Silent Hill series will be unveiled this week on Wednesday at 10pm here in the UK and in your relevant time zones, wherever you are. Here's a quote. In your restless dreams, do you see that town? The official Silent Hill Twitter account teased. Now, the latest updates for the Silent Hill series will be revealed during the hashtag Silent Hill transmission on Wednesday the 19th of October at 2pm PDT. The announcement was retweeted by Mashiro Ito, who has worked on numerous entries in the Silent Hill series as a monster designer and art director. So what do we expect? Well, the past few years has seen various whispers of Silent Hill projects in development. There's nothing more concrete though than last month's recent appearance of something called Silent Hill The Short Message, which uh, I reported on in Foxy Games UK videos as others did, popping up on the Korean video games rating. Separately, persistent rumours have swirled around a Silent Hill 2 remake, which several reports claimed is being developed by Layers of Fear and the medium developer Studio Blooper, Blooper Team, Blooper rather, not Blooper. Apparently, concept art and screenshots of this project have also been spilled online. Wow. So I myself, I've been talking about Silent Hill since before the pandemic. It's been years since my first Silent Hill rumor video. So I am certainly glad it's all coming to fruition, even if it's a bit late show like James Corden. Now, the clearest confirmation of multiple Silent Hill projects being in development came earlier this month when Silent Hill movie director Christoph Gans blabbed about several teams working on several games. Back in 2020, the Chaddy director suggested it was time to make a new Silent Hill movie. Perhaps we'll hear about that on Wednesday too. For now, Konami has a very basic Silent Hill teaser site to gaze at, which you know you can go and see on Google. And tune in though on Wednesday at 10 p.m. UK time for more or 2 p.m. PDT. So that's about where we're at for now, concluding today's Foxy Games UK news video. Now regarding the Xbox Series S holding back the current gen Gotham Knights 30 FPS cap because of the Series S and Silent Hill revelations this Wednesday, well, let's just say I'm here for all of it. Though what say you? Let's continue the discussion cordially in the comments. Go ahead, sound off, share your thoughts and opinions on today's news. As that brings us to the end of the video, but subscribe for more gaming news, rumor and speculation and of course opinion. Hit the like button, yes, hit that notification bell so we don't miss each other and you can help Foxy Games UK reach more gamers. So feel free to share the video. You must also wish to consider supporting Foxy Games UK via Patreon because, well, we're like family now, so thank you. You'll find a link in the video's description. But that concludes our time together today on this Monday. Thanks for hanging out with me. Until next time, play games, not corporations. <laughs>